co-host on the day. He is the Admiral, former president of the Berkeley County Commission, Bill Stubblefield. William? And been, been picked on a great deal this morning. <laughs> Gilstrap. Mostly off air. Gilstrap's <laughs> like the, he just fire hosing everybody here today. Yeah. It's just been uh, tough coexisting with him this morning. And Gil Scraps also suggested you have a list of folks to come on as guest host, and I should be at the bottom of that list. Are you still talking? <laughs> <laughs> Because I thought I fixed that problem. <laughs> That's right, yeah. I disconnected your microphone. <laughs> right, yeah. And Gil Scrap has a knife. You have the mute button. <laughs> Poor Bill. He has no weapons to fight back with. Uh, also, that would be uh, New York Times bestselling author John Gil Strepp's voice right there, insulting the Admiral. John, yeah. welcome back. Good morning. Can you do five days a week insulting the Admiral? <laughs> I would never insult the Admiral. <laughs> of course not. And... Uh, this uh, lovely looking Macon, uh, ma- 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 maple bacon bourbon bunt cake dropped off by Travis Bishop from his uh, coffee shop there at the garage, I believe. But only one. Is only here. one. Can you and say that fast five times? I tried once and messed it up. How do you think five times would go? <laughs> that voice, of course, belonging to Kimberly Nelson, school teacher and city councilwoman here in the eastern panhandle city mm-hmm. of Martinsburg. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you so very much. Yeah, that was quite an interesting race. Wasn't it, though? Right? Oof. And all the incumbents yes. who were opposed mm-hmm. won. Yeah. Which is fascinating. I think so. It also makes a statement. What do you think that statement is? Well, um, I'm sure you all talked about the voter turnout being pretty low. 6%. Yep. So in in the in the race that was a month earlier in Berkeley County, it was 16%. And mm-hmm. I think that's pretty sad mm-hmm. and then it goes to six percent in the city of martinsburg so but, excuse me, so, yes. but you go across the county line mm-hmm. with shepherdstown 47 48 percent isn't that lovely yeah. they show up don't yeah. they yeah so so i interpret that as uh 94 of the population are thinking hey it's cool everybody can see things are looking up it's all good just just keep them don't need to show up and vote them out mm-hmm. you know so let's just keep them so that's how i look at it a good way to look at it Thanks. especially if you won i called that on friday you did <laughs> that was that was your point they must be happy enough that they're like i don't need to change except historically the city of martinsburg elections have poor voter turnout mm-hmm. uh, I, I was told anywhere from the eight to ten percent range is fairly typical maybe you get into the teens once in a while shake my head right i know why do you think that is i wanted to have that conversation with you Let's honest to goodness you've been doing this for a very long time right yeah, right so <clears throat> i would think that after a while people realize that their lives are in some way shaped with some overarching policy um or maybe it is that they are just so far into their little uh, cocoons of home and life and work and commute that they don't think of it you know, it's it's as a as a teacher, it's really hard sometimes to get parents to sign the important documents and send it back to school. Sure. You know, like the the ability to have their kid take home an iPad, you know, and six hundred dollar iPad. The parents have to take some responsibility for it. It's it's I mean, we're trying, trying, trying to get everybody to participate in that. And we also have uh, mock elections in school. Like we have kids run for things. We teach them about, um, you know, the, the, the different parts of the government and kind of how it works. And so we run these sort of fictitious um, elections inside classrooms. But mm-hmm. I was thinking, you know, it's a captive audience. It's a 100% vote unless you're absent that day. But it's, it's different the idea that you have to put down um, your life for just a moment, and it's really five minutes to go into a place, in this case, the community room of the police station, um, to to vote, just to cast a vote. So I'm not sure. I think it needs to be studied if I just offer up an opinion, that's all it is. Um, but I would like to truly understand why it is that people don't get out. I did talk to one woman um, who I said to her, um, I would think that it's for some people, it might be kind of intimidating to come to a police station to vote. And she goes, yeah, it is. So maybe there's one reason. And that's. But that wasn't the only location in the city to vote. No, but voting day is done in schools. But with the early voting, it was done in the community room, which is within the police station. And there were absolutely no police on, you know, right there. It was just the poll workers that were running the early elections. But um, still, I guess it's kind of intimidating for some. I was told by uh, one person that 
some of the folks went to the wrong location uh, and uh, to vote, hmm. uh, or there, I don't know. there were some complications. Uh, some one particular place, I guess, wasn't ready at the exact time they were supposed to be ready, and they were directed to come back later, or they couldn't, or they were, they were told they were going to have to wait. Uh, 25 minutes and they didn't want to wait that long so they just went to work instead and hmm. maybe never came back to vote. Uh, uh, this, this is a text that I received during the course of the mm -hmm, discussion mm -hmm. we had last week. Sure. Not everything was smooth so some people yeah. just gave up and maybe they didn't come back and vote later. Well, um, in I know of one case where somebody texted me and said, hey, I just went there to vote, uh, said the printer wasn't working, they asked if I would come back and he came right back and it was the only person mm -hmm. of, of that. But, um, when you've got uh, 845, somebody gave you the exact number, just over 800 people. When you have 13,000 registered voters, and that's a bit shocking. Voters. Yeah, and if you divide 13,000 by five for five wards, you've got approximately 2,600 in each ward. It was just a really low turnout. So when people feel like their vote doesn't count, I I mean, look at just about any election and you see a very small number of people can determine the next four years, mm -hmm. whether you're talking about a local, a regional or national election. I would like to argue, and I have no reason to make this argument, but certain segments, certain demographics, mm -hmm. I suspect had a very large turnout, and those demographics would be individuals such as listen to this program mm -hmm. that are involved, yes. that are engaged. Yes. And uh, so the question is, uh, why, and I think I know why they would vote, because they have an interest, they're keeping attuned what's going on. There's a lot of folks, though, that have divorced themselves yes. from any local news, and they as a, and become, they become complacent, and apathy sets in, and they could care less what's happening, because they, they have no way of keeping up, or they have no desire to keep up with local news. Or it just doesn't come in front of them. And, so. and, and I'm going to throw a stone at our local newspaper uh i don't think our newspaper does as good a job as covering the the news aspect they do a good job of covering some social aspects but not the news aspects what is what they used to well i'm going to i'm going to give a shout out to our local newspaper okay. and to you guys because mm -hmm. you're the classic uh, information delivery systems that people have come to real to you know rely on for decades maybe a century or so are you that old, Rob? I am. I will be 101 <laughs> next Tuesday. But then the rest of the then the rest of the news delivery is just kind of yeah. fractured out yeah. over various social media kinds of things. So if you're only a Facebook user, yeah. you're only going to see that. Yeah. If you're only Instagram, you're just going to see that. So there's but, a theory uh, put out that the reason the voting was low mm -hmm. in the county was that it was such a negative campaign. People just oh, put off gosh, by by the, by the by the just by the nature of the campaigning. Uh, I didn't pay close attention, any attention really, to the city campaigning. Mm -hmm. was, was, that, was there a lot of mudslinging in, in the city campaigns as well? I, I can say from personal experience, I ran a relentlessly positive campaign. Comma, however. <laughs> however, there were times when uh, people would send me uh, screenshots of people's Facebook pages, and I'm... I'm just shaking my head with the negativity or the the lies or the innuendo. So when you have somebody like me who's just been, you know, working very positively, you can see the changes going on. Um, what do you say? But Kimberly, wasn't the negative uh, campaigns on uh, on Facebook? Wasn't that more targeted toward the mayor race than the others? No, 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 Bill. Is that right? Okay. No, ask Kimberly; she'll tell you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I really don't want to give it. I don't want to give it air and light. Sure. You know. Okay. So um, that and that's why I just said, you know, I'm just going to stick to my values. I'm just going to stick to the good that I am doing and the good that people can see. And and just go. You know what? I'm just going to pray for the best. But do you think it's possible that that's we've actually reached a tipping point? It's that that negative campaigning just flat out doesn't work. I wish people would realize that negative campaigning doesn't work. Wait to the fall. Yeah. Well, maybe that'll. Well, it ain't going to be a single positive message coming out. I mean, it's <laughs> right, yeah. it's yeah. The, the one of the negative campaigners is is going to win in in, in the yeah. fall. Maybe it's just that people, you know, I. 
politics, real politics, like political wrangling, just doesn't have an effect in people's lives. It doesn't, yeah. I, don't, I think the average person doesn't right. perceive the effect right. of politics in their lives. And I didn't want to get any of that on me. I mean, right. I'm still a school teacher. Mm -hmm. I'm still, you know, somebody has a really solid reputation. I teach on the north side of the county. I have relationships with these families. There's just no way I'm going to get in the mud. How? That's interesting. How how fine a line. That's an interesting balance. As a uh -huh. politician, a school teacher, sure, you can't. Those lines can't really cross, or can they? Can you can you talk in an assembly about? you sort of in inside politics and all sure. that. Can you talk about that stuff? Yes, yes, okay. yeah. So when we were doing these mock elections for kids, I said, you know, it's not just the president. It's not just your Senate and your Congress. It goes down the line. It's, you know, governor and da da da, da. And I said, Here, here's an example of local government. I just put a, a, um, um, a web page up there. And these were just kind of scrolling through mayor. Blah, 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 blah. And the kids went, what? What? Miss Nelson, you know, <laughs> so it was really cute when they had that realization. And and yeah, there are a number of teachers who live out in the county or who live in Maryland or even Pennsylvania who are super supportive of me. Um, these people have worked with me for, you know, 14 years and um, they know my character. So, you know, there it is. I just wasn't going to um, do anything that uh, compromised that. I'll just say I didn't have to either I mean people can see the changes going on around Martinsburg with their own eyes um, now I will say there are certain things that I've done behind the scenes that don't make it out into the public say my strong advocacy for getting a social worker on the police department for example been doing that for a few years and and then we got one and then we got three you know so I'm super happy about that and that's something that um, is really meaningful for uh, some members, m many members of the community, um, and others, it doesn't matter at all, you know, but I, it's just something that is just one of those kind of on the down low, taking care of people behind the scenes. So am I right that with the exception of Corey Roman, who mm -hmm. chose not to run, mm -hmm. All the incumbents yes. went through, right? Yes. So do you have this sense of relief now that I envision in my head that there's sort of this, in the run-up to an election, uh -huh. the foot's kind of off the gas pedal and you're sort of coasting because you're not sure what's going to happen. And then the election comes, everybody's still where they are, and now it's kind of full speed ahead again to to keep going. And, and you got another four years? Yeah, it's a four-year term. Another, another four years to to get more stuff done. Is there a sense of relief out of all of this? I am so relieved that the election is over. Um, I feel like there's so many important projects that are um, in process and I want to see them to completion, but there's also the part where we've got another four years to get stuff done. I'm super excited about that. Let's be specific. What are some of the things that you think we need to get done uh -huh. that you're going to be pushing? Okay. Um, well, the the parks project we still don't have the raise grant we don't have news of that yet and if we don't get the raise grant we're not going to be able to do it all at one time we'll have to do something like we did with the frog hollow trail here's one mile here's one mile like that um i would like to start um an arts district we already have an art walk that has been done by participating um, art um, sellers, art makers, art appreciators, and that is something that is very beneficial to a community in terms of having people wanting to come, having things to see when they are here, and then they eat at a local restaurant, right? They're dropping off tourist dollars and then they're going home wherever that is. But it's just fun to have an arts district as well for the community, for people who live here. We have so many talented artists, musicians, um, visual arts, um, theatrical arts, so many people here, and I want them to feel like they have a place of personal expression. But how would, you, how would you make a district, uh, how would you develop a district by giving uh, accommodations for them, give them space to them, or what would you do? How would you encourage a art district? Well, right now you can, at a, at a bare minimum, you can just sort of draw a line around a certain area where you see it, uh, the Apollo, you see the Children's Museum, you have um, the art places on Burke Street, you have some of the places on Queen. You can just make this little um, shape and say, that's the arts district. But 
aside from that, you might want to be able to encourage them to do more things in that. Maybe maybe there is a piece of sculpture that you can put up to say, you know, designate this is the arts district. Or maybe you can put something down on, on signs like that to say this is the arts distri district. It's kind of like if it's not like if you build it, they will come. It's like saying um, here's the garden and here's where we're going to plant things. So um, I think that would be very beneficial to the community. Um, the last time I was on, I kind of gave some overarching ideas about things. I said they can't they can't be done in their current configuration, but um, it, it's it's something that we need to be thinking about and maybe angling towards in a very practical sense. Um, uh, the council just passed something I predicted that we would pass. I said I can't speak for the entire council, just for myself. Um, we're going to have the sidewalks on Queen and King in the downtown area, the ones that have the most pedestrian traffic. We're going to have them uh, shaved down where it's like a two and a half inch lift or below for these, you know, slabs of concrete. And that's going to cost like $80,000 to do that. And some of the slabs of concrete are far worse. And then those are going to be separately poured. And that was a separate line item approval. So that's going to do a lot for the downtown. Things come up. I'm sorry. I, you've lost me. What okay. would that do for downtown? Uh, make it safer for people to okay. walk. Okay. Yeah. And also, right now, we talked about my bag of cement. Remember that uh, mm -hmm. conversation I said, of, where I said, okay, I go to Lowe's, I get a bag of cement. It's powder. I own that cement because I bought it. And then I mix it with water and I put it down in, in the ground in front of me. Now the city owns that cement. Because according to ordinance now, anybody who owns, the person who owns that building is responsible for the safety and the upkeep of that sidewalk. But and doesn't so, own the sidewalk. But doesn't own the sidewalk. And so... I'm saying in a in a shift in a support of businesses and residents downtown um, and tourism, we are um, making the sidewalk safer. Yep. Got that, Bill? Yes. I understand. Cool. Okay. Okay. So when we have commercial metals is gonna be opening up in the next couple of years and employing a bunch of people, right? Commercial metals? CMC? I'm sorry. CMC, right? yeah. um, it's north it's in the county. Oh, in the county. Oh, that's okay. in the county. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm so, sorry. Yeah, I, okay. for a moment I was thinking, what? I don't know. Oh, never mind. I was, going to, I was going to ask about additional revenues, the, the money that it's going to take to build new things. Mm -hmm. And what additional revenue sources do you see coming in? Well, um, so we've had this defunct property on King Street for decades. Um, this would be the... Interwoven. The interwoven, the much talked about interwoven, and that's going to be a project over at least three years' time because of um, the complicated way that the tax credits have worked for this. They have to do each section like one year at a time. So you've got that. Then on North Queen Street, where that big apple crusher is, you've got um, the collagen. You've already got something happening there that you can see with your own eyes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of cleanup that has gone on there. Yeah, the 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 bandage uh, making for for burn victims and and mm -hmm. uh, people with diabetes who you know get injuries and don't heal well um, so that those are two examples of outside investment in the millions and millions and hundreds of millions of dollars so um, that's pretty darn exciting and that's really going to change the the tax revenue there so that's new income sources um, well, that's investment into the construction the revenue that's generated from that, assuming that, that everything is yes. comes up, and what kind of revenue do we see coming into the city as a result of that? Okay, so people at the Interwoven, they have to go through a process, right? You, you have to uh, apply, and these people have jobs, and these people also are going to want to go out and spend money in the restaurants and you know buy their gas here, everything. You, just life, right? Just mm -hmm. the money that it takes to live. So that's going into the community. And then you have, um, for the, the production facility, you're going to have, I'm guessing, 100 employees. Where are they going to have lunch? Probably in locally, you know, in the restaurants. Where are they going to stop on their way home? Probably at one of our grocery stores. So, um, yeah, it's a benefit to everybody to do that. And I was just thinking, too, we are not displacing anyone if – we are building out facilities that have gone fallow, that are blighting com the community. 
they have gone empty for decades and decades. We're displacing no one. We're actually moving um, success into our community through those two locations. And what is bringing these companies in after these decades? What is bringing the companies in? <clears throat> I mean, they have li they've lain yeah. fallow for so long. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, part of the oh, the long term plan uh, study that that went on several years ago um, for Martinsburg was hiring a director of economic and community development. And we just happen to have one who's extremely talented at getting people to consider Martinsburg. He goes outside the community to, you know, bring a window in. You Is know, that Shane Farthing? Well, I was just trying to let Shane lie low, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we have a particularly good one, and mm -hmm. that is Shane Farthing. And he works wonderful. well with the County Development Authority as well. I think so, too. So there's no yeah. real competition. No, they tend to, work, right. tend to work together. Yeah. yeah. Could, could I shift to the schools? Real you can quick? do whatever you want, Bill. You're yeah, the admiral. You, uh, you're in the school system. Yeah. Uh, the schools have gotten a lot of negative press recently. Sure. Uh, and uh, and some of us having our difficulty having getting their arms around what caused it and what's the solution to sure. it from a teacher's perspective. Uh, where do we go from now with the school system? And you have two minutes to answer that question. Oh boy! So you're asking me who works <clears throat> with kids grades one through five mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to solve the middle school please. problem? Please, please. Okay, yeah. I'll do my best. <laughs> um, well, you know, kids. Uh, human beings develop differently at different levels and uh, you've got a bunch of kids individuating um, and I, it's really hard to say Bill it's a complete system you need the support of parents as a teacher you need the support of administration as a teacher as an administrator you need the support of parents you need a, a, a very um, safe loving educator to have your kids for seven hours a day you know it's it's a it's a system that I think is built on mutual trust and some of that has broken down in places I know that um, as a parent if my kid had done any of those things there would be quite a reckoning at home um, I raised two very fine children and um, so I, I I don't know what to tell you, Bill, is just to say that I hope for the best. I know that the eyes are on it. I want for that smaller community there around North Middle School to be able to, for the kids to be able to go to school and feel safe, for the parents to feel good about their kids, for the teachers to feel safe and to feel like they can educate kids, um, for the administrators to feel the support, um, you know, to everybody to feel the mutual support that we all need as human beings. So very generic answer i'm sorry <laughs> yeah. but, kimberly we've yes. got about a minute left final minute is yours what do you have for oh, us oh wow time just flew it always does absolutely flew mm -hmm. so i'm really excited about <clears throat> what's to come i'm absolutely delighted to be working with andy blake for another four years as a matter of fact he said to me the other day <clears throat> sorry he said uh hey kimberly i i need a like a no, this is right after the election i needed a day or two um maybe a week if you could give me a week before you give me my next four years of assignments i would appreciate it so like a true teacher <laughs> appreciate you saying that mm -hmm. yeah no i i do i just keep coming up with ideas and and the next thing sparks the next thing so when you ask me what well, you know what else i'm like okay things are to come i'm i'm very creative we'll just say that We've noticed. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you so much for coming in, Kimberly. Thank Congratulations you. on your W. Thank you. Thank and, uh, you. Appreciate uh, good that. luck to you in your next four years. Thank you. And we will uh, promise to not uh, bug you too much during the school year. Oh, but I'd the love summers, you to bug me. We're going heavy in the summer. I hit that 8 o'clock hour there. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Kimberly. Kimberly thank Nelson. You. And, and uh, we take our break here. We're back with more.